So probably about a couple months ago or so, a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, would you be able to help me with my yard? And I said, well, the first thing I need to know is what we're, we're dealing with, what kind of size we're dealing with, a bunch of different questions that always happen when I first talk to someone about their yard or what we might need to do with it. And he said, well, I've got a pretty new house, I've got new construction, so the soil is not really that great there, and I've got two acres. And I said, okay, well, that presents some major challenges in itself just with how big of a lawn that is and how much you're going to have to deal with with product and budgets and all of those things. However, even though it's such a large yard, I think it might be kind of an interesting project to take on and I think it'll be fun to just ride along for the journey, so let's explain a few more things about it today. So let's give you a little bit of background on this yard here first. I know that it was seeded at least once, it might have been twice. And that was done by just actually slicing the seed into the ground and we had a fescue bluegrass mix. Now there is some really good grass here. It's a very deep blue green type of color. I love the way that this grass is actually looking, the stuff that's there and has actually been able to establish itself a little bit. So we're gonna try to keep with that grass type and use that exact same seed. It is a little bit more on the expensive side but you're getting a good grass seed there and something that's gonna last us a long time with good quality over time as well. That was kind of the background of what happened and what happens with these new construction homes a lot is that most of the topsoil kind of goes away. They do a whole lot of grading and things on the soil to kind of make these lots look flat. And So I'm not a construction person but I've seen a lot of things happen in our area and most of the time that good soil gets taken away. Kind of the same thing here, we're just dealing with a soil that doesn't look like it has much nutrient to it yet. When you're dealing with two acres, what do we need to really do? And I think we need to set some expectations for ourselves first. Of course, it would be great to tackle this whole thing all at once. It'd be great to be able to say that we could transform this thing very quickly and get all that done, but we have to have some realistic expectations that without an irrigation system, which most of the time a large yard like this is not going to have a full irrigation system or even one at all, which is the case of this one, then we have to have some realistic expectations on how we can water certain areas when we're growing in the seed and how we can kind of cut off different chunks of it and just start with those sections. So what we're going to do here is there's a section in the backyard that was basically nothing but weeds. So last year homeowner killed that off and now we're going to actually use that as our main test spot to start with the yard and also the front yard basically in front of the house I'm just gonna take this kind of rectangular section here I'm gonna take this as kind of like an all-out program here we're gonna maybe do some humix and different liquid products as well as our granulars and, and really go crazy in the front section to kind of show what we might be able to do and how much time it's going to take in one section of the yard. And then we'll use that back section as more of just mainly a seed and a little bit of fertilizer and kind of do a minimal program there, see what the differences are. And then over time we're just going to continue to try to overseed these other areas that need to be filled in more and we're going to fertilize properly, mow properly, do all of those things that should help to transform some of those areas and we'll continue to renovate and continue to renovate. Now, I really can tell you, I have no idea how long this is going to take in terms of seasons. It took me and my yard probably about two to three seasons for my backyard to really start to look like what I wanted it to look like. And on a large property like this, again, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but we're gonna take some sections, try to see how much we can improve things, and then mirror that as we go. first question might be then where do we even begin to start on the project with these couple areas that we're going to focus on. So the first thing we need to do here is decide how are we going to tackle these couple sections that we're going to start with. So I went and got a soil test done. I took a few cores out of this section here in the backyard. I sent that in and we have the results back here. So actually we're dealing with a soil here that doesn't need a whole lot of correction in terms of pH. We're sitting at a 7 but we do need just many more nutrients along with it, which is pretty evident from the way that the soil looks, so I'm not surprised there. And what we'll do with that is we'll just use a balanced fertilizer, something that's gonna contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and we will go with that for a little while to kind of see how that's gonna add some nutrients back to the soil. Of course, also with looking at this soil, we're gonna think about maybe adding some kind of organic matter to it, 
try to boost things along a little bit. So we're gonna be adding some compost to this section as well. We're gonna come in with the pull behind aerator. We're gonna go through the section a bunch of times and try to create a good seed bed for us. We're gonna spread that compost in there at that time to kind of get it into the actual soil layer and into some of those holes that we opened up with the aerator. From there, I think that's gonna give us a little bit of boost as well in terms of just improving this soil a little bit more quickly. My friend also went over this with his lawn tractor and kind of a pull behind the thatcher. Pull out all that dead stuff, pull out some of the dead stuff that was there from the winter time and from last season that really didn't survive all of that. That's kind of cleaned up things a little bit and getting us ready for the first part of this project. The other thing that I'm sure I'm going to get in the comments right away is that's a little bit late into the season to start seeding a lawn, especially because we're getting into May already or very close to it and it's going to be getting hot soon, and I completely understand this. This also comes back to your expectations on what decisions you decide to make. Now, my friend and the homeowner there, he decided, hey, I don't wanna have this yard just sit here all summer long with nothing going on in it and just a bunch of weeds coming back up, so I wanna start trying. I'm willing to pay a little bit of money to try to seed things here and see what we can do, knowing that we're going to have to continue to work on this. We're gonna to have to overseed it probably in the fall, and knowing the expectations there that this is what might happen. That's kind of what we have going there with the springtime. We're gonna set up a sprinkler to kind of cover this area with a lawn pump to get us a little more pressure and hopefully that works out well. And we're just gonna cross our fingers for some great weather for us to get this established here yet in the upcoming weeks. So I hope you'll stay tuned for all that that's coming up. It's gonna be an interesting project to work on. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.